Hey, welcome to Branch Life Church. We're beginning our Christmas series today, and we're glad that you've joined us. I'm Josh, one of the pastors at Branch Life, and we want to encourage you to be with us every week through this holiday season as we look at good news and great joy. It's probably been that week where you transition from the fall decorations to the Christmas decorations. And if you're like us at our house, you probably got your nativity set out. Now, this is a pretty big nativity set. It may be bigger than the one at your house, but the typical nativity set has these incredible characters that are a part of the Christmas story. And as we travel through these next few weeks together as a church, you're invited to join us as we look at the Christmas story through the eyes of the different characters represented in the story. We're going to see Jesus through the eyes of the wise men and the angels, Mary, Zachariah, and even the shepherds that came together and they worshiped him. And here's what happened in every single case. The Bible tells us that they first got the good news. So we've got some good news in our church. We have our, our pastor Scott and his wife Brooke had their third baby who was just born this week. Man, baby news is good news, right? They got this new birth, this new life, and this news has been shared. The same thing happened. This news spread first to the family, then to all kinds of people in the town and around the world that the baby who was to be the Messiah was born. And each of these characters got the news in unique and special ways. The Bible tells us then that it caused great joy and there was great celebration in all of these different areas and it's told by the angels that it's, this news is great joy to all people. And so this is great news for the shepherds, for the angels, for Mary, for you, and for me. As we go into maybe one of the most unique Christmas seasons of our lives, Let's focus in on the good news and how it can bring us some great joy this holiday season. Whatever it looks like, however it's set up, whatever traditions are in place, whatever has to be moved, there is still good news of great joy which will be to all people. And we're going to celebrate that together. Today we launch with our first characters and we're going to read about these characters in the Christmas story in Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 through 12. So if you have your Bibles or you're on your screens, you can lean in or you can read along with me as we read this part of our Christmas story today. Then we're going to sing a few carols and we'll come back and try to understand the great news and the great joy that this brings to all of us. Let's read together in Matthew chapter 2, starting in verse 1. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born the king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and we have come to worship him. Now, when Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And he assembled the chief priests, the scribes of the people, and he inquired to them where Christ was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea. So, for so it was written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Well, then Herod summoned the wise men secretly, and he ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent, to, he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go, search diligently for the child, and when you find him, bring me word, that I too may come and worship him. And after listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They fell down and they worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned by a dream not to return to Herod, they departed back to their own country by another way. 
Today, we're going to look at the Christmas story through some of these characters. Specifically, we're going to see Jesus through the eyes of the wise men. And this will be an encouragement to us as we receive this good news and have great joy together as a church in this season. We want to worship through some of these great songs of the season and a song that we're teaching uh, all of us as we celebrate through in music the great news that's been announced to all of us. So we'll see you back here after we sing some songs together. So we're jumping into our Good News Great Joy series by looking at our first characters and we're going to see Jesus through the eyes of the wise. Now in the order of this story, the wise men are one of the last characters to enter. They were not present at the manger. Uh, where Jesus was born. They came months, maybe even years after, but there is a character who's a part of this story that we just read who was present long before Jesus was born. You see, the wise men knew to find Jesus because they were led to Jesus. In my life, I, as I was growing up, I was introduced to Jesus in a lot of different ways. Uh, my parents, my, my grandparents knew Jesus. I had friends and family members. And, and from the youngest days I can remember, I was a part of a church family where I was encouraged to read the Bible, to know the Bible, and understand the Bible. And in my story, I was sitting in a children's meeting led by two uh, teachers. And I'm not making up these names. Teachers, The teachers' names were Mrs. Good and Mrs. Comfort. Mrs. Good and Mrs. Comfort, good comfort, pointed me to Jesus. They told me the Jesus story. They told me about where Jesus came from. And I remember sitting there realizing that I knew about Jesus. I knew about God, but I didn't know Jesus. And when we come to this Christmas season, I want you to think about who has led you to Jesus. Who has shown you Jesus? Who has given you the good news and the message of who Jesus is? Maybe you're a part of this conversation because you were invited by a friend and you don't know what you think about this Christmas story. I want to encourage you to follow that friend's lead. They're showing you a way to Jesus. Lean in. Test these things. Ask questions. As we present to you Jesus through the eyes of different characters, always remember who brought you to Jesus in the first place. And that person or that event, or in this case, that star, was a part of God's plan for your journey and for your life from the very beginning. In Matthew chapter 2, in verse 22, we see that uh, the, the star, the character of, of this story is brought in. And it, the, the wise men had traveled from their far land and they said, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and, and have come to worship him. So in the wise men's experience, in the wise men's story, this star got their attention. Have you ever asked yourself, why did the wise men follow a star in the first place? What happened to cause them to say, I'm going to go where that star is leading because that star is doing something that no other star has done? In the ancient culture where the wise men came from, whether they were from Persia or Babylon or even more into the Orient, they believed in celestial signs. They'd look up into the heavens and they would try to know and understand uh, what the stars were showing them. And in this particular case, these wise men saw something that had never been seen before and it got their specific attention. And something had happened in their story where they had been introduced to a coming Messiah or the King of the Jews. You see, the Bible, specifically the Old Testament, has all kinds of prophecies that point forward to a Messiah who's going to come and rule and save his people. And this Messiah is given very specific instructions, We've uh, very specific prophecies. We've already read one of them that said that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem and be of Judea. He'd be from the house of David. And so when Herod was like, who are they talking about? How do they know about the king of the Jews? I thought I was the king. He went to the Bible scholars and they said, listen, there's a prophecy that says in Bethlehem, a king is going to be born. And these, these 
wise men from a different nation, from a different land, knew that there was a prophecy or prophecies about Jesus. Maybe it had been that someone introduced them to the prophet Isaiah. In Isaiah 9, 6, it says in verse 6, For unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Man, if they knew that that was about the Messiah, and then they saw a star that was pointing to someone special, they connected that star to the King of the Jews, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty Father, Prince of Peace. The government was going to be on their shoulders. They could not sit still. They had to follow that star. And that star had been in place since the creation of time. That star had been ordered and made and created for this purpose to celebrate the good news that the king was born. You see, the star led the wise men to the king. Now think about this for a second. The king of the universe has worshipers everywhere. The king of the universe has worshipers everywhere. The king is worshiped not only by you and by me, once we believe, but is worshiped by the sun and the moon and the stars. The trees and the rocks and the rivers will lift their voices and clap their hands if we become silent. The all-powerful God of the universe is worshipped and is followed and is served by by all of creation in all of the world. When you look into the distant stars from distant planets and you remember the great wise sayings of Pumbaa the pig that those are, are... Great big gases of fire burning millions of billions of miles away. You have to think about the greatness of our God who put one of these stars in place and moved it out of the natural order of things so that those looking for the king, for those looking for the God of the universe, would be led to him. This Christmas season, Are you a worshiper of God? Are you going to join in with all of the universe, worshiping the great God who has power over the stars and the sun and the moon? Are you concerned about what's happening in this world? Are you concerned about the church and where it's going to go? Are you concerned about your family? Are you concerned about your country? Listen, the God of the universe is all powerful and he has worshipers everywhere. If he can move a star, If he can direct it to announce his birth, then he can take care of you and he can take care of me today. That is the good news. That's what brings us great joy in the season. And that's who the wise men set off on an incredible journey to go find. As we continue in Matthew, uh, we start looking at the, the verses where the wise men kept going. And they said, for we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. So not only did they see something amazing, but they they decided that we're not going to sit still on this. They decided that there's action that had to be taken and that they were going to get up, that they were going to pack up, that they were going to go on a journey, that they were going to pay the expenses and prepare the way because they had to worship the king of the universe. Listen, we understand that these wise men were probably more than just three people. A lot of times there's three wise men in our manger scene because they brought frankincense, gold, and myrrh. But most likely, this was 12 or 20 people that traveled in a caravan. Yeah, they probably had a camel because they had to go across a desert. They probably traveled for two months to up to two years on this journey. They were probably high in, in royalty or advisors themselves to kings. But where they were, and the, the, the prestige that they had, the comfort that they had in their home, they got up and they left. They, they put aside friends and family and job and occupation to pursue worshiping the king because they were convinced that this wonderful counselor, the Prince of Peace, was here and they had to go see him. They had to worship Listen, I want to encourage you with this thought. Worship is work worth doing. Worship is work worth doing. Sometimes 
we can get lazy about our worship. We'll worship if it's convenient. We'll worship if we have time. We'll get to it eventually. Some people join in worship just during the Christmas season because the rest of the year, frankly, it's too busy. And and we think that worship should be convenient and it's getting more and more convenient. I can watch it on my phone. I can, I can uh, look at it later in the week. Who says I got to get up and go to church every Sunday? I mean, it's, isn't the church more than that? Yes, the church is more than that. But worship is also work. That's why we call our Sunday gatherings a service. It's a worship service. It's an activity that we sacrifice for. We get up from where we are. We go on a journey. We put our place into a corporate setting where we can gather together and we can worship God Almighty. We sacrifice time and energy and effort and finance and money. Why? Because worship is worth it. And worship is not designed to be easy, but it's also something that is worth doing. Listen, it, it is, it's been a kind of a lifelong mission of mine to convince teenagers to get off their screens and to kind of go do something fun. And you know, if you've been ever dealing with teenagers, and I was a youth pastor for a long time, and we were trying to get kids to come out and to go do things, and we're going to go to the amusement park, we're going to go to a concert, we're going to go on a scavenger hunt, we're going to get together and have youth group, we're going to play games, we're going to sing, and, and sometimes the, the kids would say to their parents, oh, I don't feel like it, Yeah, I don't want to do that today, I'd rather stay home, watch a movie, i got too much homework. But if they would just go and have a great time, this is what always happened. Oh, man, I'm so glad I came. Oh, this was so awesome. It was so wonderful. I'm so glad I was a part of this. And, and they realized once they did it that it was incredibly worth their time, their energy, and their effort. Those things that are worth doing are worth doing well. And there's nothing more worth doing than worship. I want to encourage you as you go through this Christmas season to be very intentional about your worship rhythms. Be with us on Sunday mornings. Yes, of course, when we gather together, let's worship. Set those sides aside a time. Uh, uh, be intentional about it. And if you're able to be with us in person, you make that journey. And if for you during this season, you've got to work a worship virtually, then you intentionally set aside that time as a family. And you, you put away distractions and you go focus because the king of the world has been born. He has presented himself. He wants to talk to you and commune with you and connect with you. He wants to fill your soul. He wants to renew your mind. He wants to spiritually fill you up. And those things happen when you worship. And worship is work. We're going to have to make the commitment and go through the motions. But it's worth it. And it's work that is worth doing. These wise men knew that it was worth their time and energy and effort to go worship the king. We continue to travel down our story and we see ourselves back in Matthew chapter 2. After Herod had dismissed them and he sent them to Bethlehem, they came out of the castle or they came out of the Herod's palace and they looked back up and they reoriented themselves to that star. That star that they had been following for many months was now over them in this town and they were getting ready to go to Bethlehem and the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest. That's why we say that this is a unique a unique experience. This star moved intentionally and rested specifically over Jesus. And these wise men attested to it. It came to rest over the place where the child was and when they saw the star. Listen, in this moment, when they realized that the star had stopped, when they realized that the star had, had completed its journey, when they realized they were about to meet the king of the, new, the, the Jews, they had some good news. They had received a message. They had been told about something special. There had been a born. There had been a born. There had been a birth. A baby had been born who was the king of the world, who is the savior of mankind. And all of a sudden, their hearts started beating. Their palms started sweating. They got very excited and they ran to find out where that star landed. And the Bible says that they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. 
There was a little wise men dance party. They had a celebration like no others. And listen, we Christians of all people should be great at celebrating. We should be great at celebrating the good news of Jesus, celebrating when we worship together, when someone gets baptized. And we need to understand that this celebration was no small deal. They had traveled and they had made it and they had found him. Listen, discovering Jesus always brings great joy. When Mrs. Good and Mrs. Comfort introduced me to Jesus, I remember having a moment where I prayed and I I accepted Jesus as my own personal Savior. And in that moment, after saying amen and realizing that there had been a life transformation in my heart, there there was an unexplainable joy that I was able to experience in that moment and time. The thing about who Jesus is, is Jesus is always present in our days. Jesus is always present in our lives. The difference is whether or not you see him, whether or not you recognize him in those moments. Hey, 2020 has been a hard year. And it may be one of those times where you said to yourself, if there's a God, I don't see him. How would God let all of these things happen to so many people? How come we have to keep hearing stories about friends and family members and relatives and, and distance who, are, who are sick or who are losing their job or who are on a ventilator or who have passed away? Wouldn't a God stop this? And what I want to say to you now during this Christmas season is that God, in through the person of Jesus, has been present this entire time. And he loves you and he cares about you and he is walking with you. Do not miss the presence of God. Because when you see it, when you see, hear his still small voice, when you watch that miracle take place, when you feel that peace or understand that healing, when you see God's presence, it always brings joy. That's why worship is so worth it. Because it reminds us that God is there. God is there in our struggle. God is there in our heartache. God is there in our weakest. God is there in our celebration. God is there at the high points and God is there at the low points. God is always there and worship allows me to see his presence and worship brings me into his spirit of celebration. The king of the world, the God of the universe is present with you and is a part of your life. I want to invite you, if you're on a spiritual journey and you've realized, like I realized with Mrs. Good and Mrs. Comfort, that you've never personally accepted Lord Jesus Christ, you've never said, I want to believe in Jesus and become a part of the family, that you can do that now. You can make that decision in this moment. We are in this world full of problems for one reason, because the world is broken by sin. And there's one way to fix it. And that's through believing in Jesus. For God so loved this broken world that he gave his only son, Jesus, on Christmas. That whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Will you believe in Jesus today? Tell him that you're sorry for your sins, that you believe Jesus came and he died and he rose again, and that you want to accept the free gift of salvation. If you have any more questions about that, you can go to branchlife.church slash gospel. And you can read more about what it means to become a follower of Jesus. And maybe you are a follower of Jesus, but you've lost a little bit of joy. Let's use this Christmas season to see Jesus' hand in every day. Maybe take a little journal where you take notes about God moments, where he's shown you things in, in big and small ways, where when you discover something, there's a celebration. We're in the midst of renovating our Pewtown campus, and we're renovating an auditorium that was literally built in the 1850s. 1850s. We've taken some things off of the wall, and as we were taking things off of the wall that were probably put up there over 100 years ago, some nails fell out, and they were these nails that were handcrafted. That discovery of nails that were used over 100 years ago sparked a little bit of joy in me. I took five or six of these nails. I, I ran home to my kids who are in, in second grade or in sixth grade. And I said, guys, guys, you got to look at these nails. And they looked at them and they said, they're kind of weird. They don't look like normal nails. And I said, these nails were made by hand and they were used over a hundred years ago. You're touching something that's over a hundred years old. And that discovery was amazing. And they're like, can we keep them? I want to save them. Listen, God is showing himself to us in little discoveries that have been planted in our lives hundreds of years ago. 
It might be kind words from a friend. It might be ancient words from a text. It might be calmness in the midst of the storm, a peace that passes understanding. It might be a kind gesture or a, a, something that's given to you by a stranger. In all of those moments, those are God discoveries where he is giving you, even in difficult times, great joy. Listen, discovering Jesus always brings great joy. Have you discovered Jesus for yourself? As we close out, we see the rest of the story of the wise men as they are introduced to Jesus. They heard the great news. They had great joy and they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and they worshiped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I have a friend of ours who only gives their kids three presents. They give a gold, a frankincense, and a myrrh presents to their kids. Just three. I've been trying to figure out how we can work that angle in our house. Seems like the piles of presents pile up every year, and that's a good problem to have. But they take these three presents from the pattern of the wise men, and they have one that's smaller, one that's medium, and one that's usually a little bit more. And the kids know to open these presents and to look forward to uh, these presents being something that is honoring to them, something that shows that they're loved, something that can, they can use to celebrate over the Christmas season. Listen, the wise men in their worship, took their treasures and they laid them at the feet of a king to honor that king. When you have a gift and you've been given a gift, your gifts are our offering to the king. What do you have to offer to the king this Christmas season? Open your treasures, open your heart and offer it to the king who is worthy of that worship. Maybe it is an offering of time. Maybe it's an offering of service. Maybe it's an act of kindness and it's a way you can show love to others. Maybe it's a song that you can sing. Maybe it's a gift that you can give and you can help build the kingdom and encourage your neighbor and love one another. Every time you use one of your gifts, you honor the king. So this Christmas season, on your list, you're going to buy your presents for the little ones and for the cousins and for the parents and the grandparents. But I want to encourage you at the beginning of this month to think about how you will use your gifts to honor the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Because worship is work that's worth doing. We've seen the wise men's announcement of great news good news that brought them great joy. They experienced Jesus like no one else had the opportunity to experience following the signs, following the prophecies, following the stars, and then learning that that work to worship Jesus was worth it. They had great joy when they found him and they discovered who he was and they offered their gifts to honor him. We can learn from this example from the wise men. I want to encourage you to follow up with us today. Whether you're watching in person or online, we want to ask everyone to take a moment and to fill out your connection card. Let us know how we can pray for you during this season and that you were able to engage in worship today uh, on Sunday or during uh, another season. Even if you're watching this even months later, we'd love for you to fill out that connection card. If you have any questions about the gospel, you can find that card online as well. I want to invite you to come back next week as we go through another character from the manger scene and we learn through their eyes about good news, great joy. We're also having a virtual Christmas Eve celebration. It's going to be available for you for download to interact with during your family Christmas celebration. So look for more news on that to come in the weeks ahead as we continue to celebrate good news and great joy during this Christmas season together. Thank you so much for taking your time to worship with us today. Have a great rest of your day.